And now I'll go ahead and turn it over to Claudia. Great. Thank you, Amy. Appreciate it. Let me turn this thing off that just popped up. Hello, everyone. I'm Claudia Holland, Chief of the Bureau of Library Development in the Division of Library and Information Services here in Tallahassee. It's great to have you all on the call today. Uh, we're, we're going to be talking about the services and resources provided by the Florida Braille and Talking Book Library, which is part of the division, oh, excuse me, department of education's division of blind services. It, it, they're like us. We have this whole long you know, stream of words that we have to say where we're from, what bureau, blah, blah, blah. Anyway. Um, so I want to remind you all, please don't hesitate to jump in with your questions or to share experiences that you've had in your libraries with this very special population. Uh, we're very fortunate to have Maureen Dorzinski and several other talking book library staff from around the state joining us today. Um, and I really uh, am very pleased to introduce Katrina Harkness, who is our uh, adult services consultant, and she's going to be facilitating today's discussion. So hit it, Katrina. Hi, I'm Katrina Harkness, and thank you, Maureen. Thank you so much for being here. Um, just a shout out to the Pinellas Talking Book Library, who's a national award winner this year, uh, got an award from, from NLS. And a fun fact about the Florida Braille and Talking Book Library, they record the Sunshine State Young Reader Awards and the Florida Teen Read Awards for the National Collection if that isn't done commercially. Um, <laughs> so um, uh, I'd like to- I turn have next over year's to, right here. And I turn things over to Maureen Dorosinski. Thank you, Katrina. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'm so glad to have uh, so many people here that are interested in uh, what our library has to offer. Um, so I guess uh, we can just start with a, uh, the, the big umbrella, which is uh, where, where our collection uh, comes from. It is the uh, National Library for the Blind and Print Disabled. Um, they're a branch of the Library of Congress. And to distribute our books, we use another branch of the government, which is the uh, US Post Office. So no patron has to ever pay to uh, receive a book or a uh, talking book player from us. And in the future, they will never have to uh, pay to receive a wireless e-reader. So a little more on that later. So the National Library for the Blind and Print Disabled, uh, the acronym is NLS. NLS provides a huge collection. They have 317, 715 titles. 317,715 titles. Let's get that number straight. See, it just boggles the mind how many titles that as a patron, they have access to. Uh, there are, a, wow, there are 100, and 33,872 books in audio and braille that are immediately available to patrons if they have a device, a personal device, an Android or Apple, and they can download these titles. Yes, they can. They do, they are not held back by having to wait for the mail to get the cartridges that I have here in the container. It is simply flash drive technology and you can put a whole book on here and you put the cartridge right here in the front of the free talking book player. You can get accessories for it. You've got your headphones and you have a remote control that can turn this 
regular player into an advanced feature player that has the capability to jump chapter to chapter within the book, but also the ability to chat, jump book to book. Wait a second, what did I just say there? I just showed you all these individual books, right? And you put them in one by one. So how can this player jump from book to book? Well, that is the next iteration of service. It is duplication on demand where you can get a bunch of books, like an entire series on this one cartridge. So that is the next service coming. So we, we have got it. We have got it down. So back to that other service, that download. You can put it on your phone, take it with you. If you visit our website, which is fldoe.org. We can probably get that typed out a little bit later, a little more correctly. I think Sarah or Karen might be able to help me out with that. Um, that we have a little demonstration of how lightning quick you can search for and download a book for the Bard. Near the end of this uh, presentation, if we have time, thank you, Amy. Um, right there, we got that right in the chat there. dbs.fldoe.org, I had it right, forward slash library. And that's our, that's our website. But it is lightning quick to download a book to the device and they get to keep it forever. We don't have to give our books back here we can keep them forever. And that is a, another feature of NLS that they're always on the cutting edge of something new. They've just out, um, put out something called Braille On Demand. A patron, if you're a patron, you can get one Braille book free per month embossed from NLS and you can keep it forever. So that is another brand new service. So, all right. So we have this big national collection. Well, so how does Florida fit into that? Well, we are the regional library for the state of Florida. We make sure that the Florida patrons, we have a good regional supplemental collection to add to NLS. Now we here in our recording studio, we have a recording studio and we actually have two other recording studios, uh, one Insight for the Blind and another one, um, Bab Brevard for the advancement. You know what? And I bet we can do a better search than my memory for that. <laughs> we'll put that up there later. Uh, but two rec other recording studios and ours. And as you mentioned, we do record the Sunshine State. Here is the one of them. Lola Benko, Treasure Hunter. And we have the Million Dollar Race. Mystery on Magnolia Circle. So these are the books. We have the books that kids want to read. And yeah, they are so eager to get right on out of here. So we have, we make the books here at the regional. We also record uh, things like the uh, White Cane Bulletin. So blind service organizations come to us and they um, asked us to record their newsletters. We also create them in Braille and we distribute them to patrons. Uh, sometimes they come through monthly, sometimes quarterly, and we make a newsletter. Uh, we also have a, the National Federation for the Blind has something that's called Newsline and it's NFB Newsline and Sarah, put together a training for all of Florida. Uh, very impressive there. 
Uh, that gives hundreds of magazines and newspapers all over Florida. Patrons have access to that. They can just call right up and dial what they want and they're listening to their, um, I'm sure, I think there's a, there's a, a journal of Daytona, Daytona Beach Journal uh, comes through there. A lot of uh, local papers and wow, there's just so much that you can do. Well, but let's start at the beginning. How do you become a patron? Well, we, you can go to our website and there is a, a side, um, there's a menu along the left-hand side and you can, how to apply for services. That's it. And you can uh, click on that. Now, who is eligible? Let's see, the, an individual who is blind or has a visual impairment that makes them unable to comfortably read print books. So um, if you're blind in one eye, macular degeneration, um, anything that is 2200 or less in the better eye with correcting lenses. So there's some very exacting if you want that, but also an individual who has a perceptual or a reading disability, or an individual who has a physical disability that makes it hard to hold or manipulate a book, or to focus and move the eyes as needed to read a print book. So, um, there are many people that will qualify for our service and are just not aware of it. Now, the certifying authority. Now, there are many people included. And recently, they have expanded the people who can certify the application and sign up patrons for service. So, a doctor of medicine, doctor of osteopathy, ophthalmologist, optometrist, psychologist, registered nurse, therapist, or here's where it gets interesting, professional staff of hospitals, institutions, and public or welfare agencies, such as an educator, social worker, caseworker, counselor, rehabilitation teacher, certified reading specialist, school psychologist, superintendent, or librarians. So, you, there is a application where you, it's a uh, name, address, phone, um, and an alternate contact if you cannot be reached. Uh, veterans get um, a primary uh, first consideration. Um, we also even have, if you have a hearing impairment, we have a special player. Well, well, it's the same player. It's an advanced player, but it's programmed with special software by NLS that plays the books at an extremely high level. And that comes directly from NLS. Uh, but you do need your doctor or an um, audiologist to uh, certify for that. It's a separate application. Um, Okay, so let's see. Um, we can sign up uh, residential care facilities, uh, retirement homes, assisted livings. So if you're in, in your county, you know, it's not uh, just uh, individuals, but it's institutions as well. Uh, we have a separate application for that. Uh, we have, there's, there's magazines, there's magazines in audio and braille, and magazines are instantly available 
uh, through this BARD download system. Um, we have print Braille books. This, as part of our Oceans of Possibility reading program, because we try, we do, yes, our collection includes and mirrors pretty much everything that you can get at your public library. Ooh, competition. <laughs> but, but we also have, his, this is one of the books that we have in the um, uh, book list for the uh, program, If Sharks Disappeared. So how we do print braille picture books, it, whoops, let's, let's, get a, let's get a real good picture here. Let's see, here we go, whoops. You know what? Why don't you tell me where's a good one here? There we go. So you get the, book, like the picture book, and then you get a braille oh. embossed overlay. Wow. So you get the whole book, and then, oops, you get the, where was it? Oh, there it was. You get the Braille embossed overlay. Maureen, quick question. Uh, actually, I have a couple. So what's the turnaround time sort of typically for someone who's uh, submitted an application? Like, let's say one of us in our branches uh, um, helps to uh, certify someone. What, what, what happens then? Well. You have the application and what you're gonna do is you're going to um, scan it, uh, scan the application, attach it to an email and email it to opac underscore librarian at um, dbs.fldoe.org. And then we uh, receive it and it goes to our registration person and she works on it. And it should be within about five days. That's our goal. That's good to know. And also, do you have to purchase the books uh, prior to recording them? In other words, if you, let's say you're purchasing a book, it's not going to be the Braille book, but you want to record that book for your population. I assume you have to purchase a print copy in order to do that? We do. We have a Friends of Library Access Group, and um, they're able to, through their donations, we're able to go ahead and uh, purchase print copies of the book. We need two copies, one for the um, narrator side of the booth, and then the other one for the monitor. And they, it's, it's a fascinating process because they do, I mean, they, it's, it's word for word, word perfect. And you'll read along, read along. And if there's a mistake, they like, oh, oh, now our editor, Miriam, she also is a uh, uh, monitor sometimes and, and she's a stickler. Now I recorded uh, a book once and then uh, man, we also do manuals and stuff. And while well, she was my monitor a couple of times and man, she's hard, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> because we want to make sure it's perfect. And then it goes through reviewing. Yes. And then it goes through reviewing. And oh. then if the reviewer makes a mistake, then it goes back and it goes back to the, rec the recording team. And then it goes through a editing process. And then that gets reviewed again. And then there's an auditory review. And then there's a lot of work. So it might take, if somebody requests a book, it could take about, we've seen um, nine months to a year to uh, get a new book from uh, being in the print, cop print format to recorded and up on BARD. Hmm. Wow. Um, 
let's see. Please feel free to ask questions of Maureen. And I think Sarah is, yep, Sarah's here too. And I saw too that Jennifer Shipley is here. I think she's from another talking book library as well. Um, and if there I'm are from other... Miami Dade, yep. Sorry. Jennifer Shipley's from Miami Dade. I'm here. Oh, great. Yeah. Thanks, Jennifer. Um, anyway, I interrupted your flow, Maureen. Go ahead. Oh, no, not at all. Also, so we've got, you know, Sarah from FL1G, and then let's. Uh, uh, I know she's hiding back there, but I know Karen from uh, FL1J. Uh, she has uh, been uh, with the program a, a long time as well. So um, let's see. Let's oh, see I, what I, else. I have another question. So okay. on the Braille, that is so cool. You know, that, that embossed Braille, that, does that also describe the pictures too? No, that those books okay. are made for maybe a um, a uh, a blind parent reading to a child, mm -hmm. or a um, parent reading to a blind child teaching them Braille. Uh -huh. So it, so those that it, that that unique collection uh, works works both ways. Interesting. Thank you. Trying to trying to think of anything. Uh, what else we could uh, do? There's just so much. We oh, NLS has a music collection. Ooh. You can, but it's a it's not. It it is music um, instruction. So they have musical scores in Braille and they have instructional books like how to play the guitar. And it's, it's just amazing at all the materials that NLS has and that the patrons would you know, have access to. And I saw on your website that you also have books in Spanish. We do. And thanks to the um, Marrakesh Treaty, which allows for the exchange of recorded and Braille titles with different countries. Because the to be to get our service, you need to be a to um, be a U.S. citizen or um, live uh, in the in the U.S. I have the term. I was looking for the uh, terminology. I don't quite. In any event, the in the past we would only share materials that um, were produced here in the United States. But with this Marrakesh Treaty, it's an explosion of titles from everywhere. Not only, yeah, even Canada, believe it or not, has a huge collection of Amish fiction. They seem to have a lot of that. And they, that is a lot of um, an additional subject heading that our patrons, a lot of our patrons are interested in. Hmm. And there is, um, we, it includes, I got the number, 48 foreign languages. Wow. Yes. Amazing. That's great. And um, it, if somebody has a temporary temporary disability, are they eligible? Yes. Yes, they are. Um, let's see. Yes, NLS, um, they just, they do everything that they can to uh, make sure, because the, the primary thing is access. And, and that's what the focus is, is making sure that all patrons have the direct access to uh, books, magazines, um, devices, anything, anything that is really put out there for educational and print that they just want to have the same 
instant access as cited, as the cited audience. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna uh, put this out to our audience real quick to get folks involved a little bit. Just a really simple yes or no in the chat. Have you accessed materials for a patron or a student? Is this something that you have done? Just let us know. And um, Maureen, I wanna make sure folks have the correct web page um, for certifying a patron. I'm looking on your website, where should I go? Um. I'm going to uh, let's see. Let me get my web page on. Okay, so let's see. Whoops. Okay. And I'm seeing uh, we have a lot of folks who haven't used this service for a patron yet. Um, so I want to ask y'all if you have any questions about how to go about doing that, how to get a patron certified or how to get resources for a patron. And I know we have, um, how many sub-regionals is it, Maureen? Nine. Nine sub-regionals. So um, if you have a sub-regional, they're your contact, but if there isn't one in your area, then, then the main library in Daytona is the contact? That is correct. And I have the, I've got a, um, list here. Um, so Duval County, that's Jacksonville Public Library. Uh, Miami-Dade, that's Jennifer, their FL1C. Um, Orange County, Palm Beach County, that's Sarah. Broward County, Lee County, that's Karen. Uh, Brevard County, um, Escambia County, West Florida, up in the panhandle, <laughs> and uh, Pinellas. Pinellas and Sarasota counties is the uh, Pinellas Public Library. And then everybody else, we got you covered. So, so, so what does someone do? Do they, if they're not in a county that has that service, do they just, what do you recommend? Well, we could um, you start from our website and let me get the right, I'm gonna some, go ahead some and of the copy libraries, this in the chat. Can I interrupt one second? Cause uh, like Miami-Dade okay. also covers Monroe County and I believe Pinellas also covers Hillsborough, right? No, no. Pinellas and Sarasota, Pinellas and Sarasota counties. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. We cover Monroe also. Okay, good to know. Yes, I had that on there. Okay, so um, I just put there the link to the page. That's the start for the apply for services. So um, what you would do is you need the application. So in the middle there, there is the link for an application for free library service for individuals. Hmm. You no, know, I'm I'm just going to give all the links. So everybody then can make it. Um, now what I'll tell you a secret, we're working on. Uh, making a um, making this a little less cutting down on the clicks, maybe doing something um, something that would just be a one a one shot application. But at this moment, this is what this is what we're uh, this is what we're doing here. So there's the link for the application. Now you would uh, fill out the application. And uh, you know, just save it on your, you know, your your desktop or whatever. Fill it out with the information. Uh, if you're the certifier, go ahead and and certify it. Then you're going to email that application to us. 
admin at pbs.flboe.org. Okay, so that is the email address that I just put in the chat that you will attach this application to and email it. Then you can drop it in the mail, uh, drop it, you know, in the hard copy in the in the mail to us. And of our um, contact information and everything is right there on the website. Um, yeah, we can make this a little more. And I just noticed something as going through this. Um, I can also get our, it's not there right now, but I can get our, um, we'll put that email address a little bit closer on that page. Yes. So you download the application, fill it out, certify it, attach it to an email and shoot it into us. And five days later, we'll be in business. Right. I, Depending I, on workload. I'm wondering if you have some ideas. I mean, there were a lot of people saying no, you know, to whether they had ever uh, certified somebody or um, in their library or even perhaps um, shared information with someone about uh, your services. So I would think that to some degree, the marketing aspect of this is really important for us uh, at the local level. So has anyone done any kind of marketing or outreach to people? Well, we're, we're really starting. Uh -huh. um, we're starting to branch out on that. Um, there's going to be, um, we do, NLS does provide um, uh, some publicity, uh, some postcards, and some reference information sheets that uh, we can send out. Sometimes we send out um, applications and um, we make application packs uh, to send to uh, deliver at, maybe if we're having a, a booth at a health fair or something like that, we will have those information. But the, uh, the thing that we're, uh, getting ready to really uh, delve into is that uh, DBS and our communications department, we're going to uh, make a, we're gonna make like a, a form letter that we could, uh, and along, along with the application, uh, give it, you know, use that as kind of an, an outreach, or we could also uh, send, uh, packs like stacks of hard copy applications and hard information like those NLS postcards and just things about the library that can be put on a table in your uh, locations. Um, you know, so it can be a handy reference there uh, that we, we can, uh, you know, just basic, basically just take a uh, take a run of all the counties and and send them out um, publicity packs filled with applications and um, all the uh, services and frequently asked questions and information like that that we could uh, do. Now I know that uh, Sarah, for one, and Jennifer and Karen, they do local outreach. They like the health fairs and the uh, the caregivers and things. So, so they might have enough, some more, uh, some more uh, feedback about what they do locally. And we did get a question in the chat. It says, if I as a librarian certify that a patron to my knowledge is eligible, am I liable if my patron is not being completely honest with me? Some of our librarians will worry about this. Well, that is uh, that is a uh, consideration. Um, I guess the best that I can say is I could uh, 
that's a valid consideration. And I would uh, kind of pass that on to, I'll see if any, if anybody in the network has encountered that and I'll send that out as a question, but basically uh, it's to your, to your best knowledge. If somebody comes to you and it, and it, they appear that they can benefit for the service, then, you know, we are, we are happy to take them at their word and go ahead and, and provide the materials. Um, you know, if, now, in, during the pandemic, for example, our uh, reader services supervisor, uh, when she, uh, when people were referred to her and they couldn't leave the house, um, she certified over the phone. So that is a, um, uh, so there's always, there is, there's always something more that we can, that we can look at or do. Um, yes, we, um, yeah, the, um, yes. Uh, so I just noticed Karen is saying that there's, they have a link on their library homepage, like a lot of the uh, counties do. So maybe more of the counties, if we, you know, uh, could, uh, that could be something uh, to be considered that the more of the counties can put this links on their uh, homepage. If, if a library is doing a book club or another um, event around a specific title, is there a way for them to find out if a title is available through BARD or, or otherwise available? Yes, the we have a public, anybody can search the library OPAC, the uh, public access catalog. Um, you only have to be a patron logged in to uh, place orders, but you can, and I'm going to pull it up just now, make sure, here we go, here is the, Flowpack, <laughs> F-L-O-Pack at Kloss.com. You can search this, and um, and this is also uh, on our website too. Um, search the catalog, and you can see if a, a title is is there as part of the uh, is part of the collection. And a question that come in earlier: Very few blind patrons come into our library. What outreach opportunities are there, and how do we find them in, in our area? Well, I think. Um, Let's see, Sarah and Jennifer have some feedback on this. Or Karen, I know you. I think it's Sarah. Great. If you want to jump in. Uh, Sarah, what I've been doing, there what I've been doing lately, this is Jennifer. Um, you know, it was very tough during COVID. We our, our, our most successful outreach is to like health fairs, um, you know, Alzheimer's Association conferences, um, things like that in the past, like in person, you know, you go have a table and you promote your services in person at these health fairs or, or any kind of fair involving a disability. Um, but with COVID, it was really tough. So I started reaching out to people through Zoom, different organizations. Um, I did a a um, presentation for the Lighthouse for the Blind because the Miami Lighthouse is very active. I did a presentation for the um, Division of Exceptional Students from Miami-Dade County Public Schools. Um, I've reached out to the Alzheimer's Association, um, things like that, and offer Zoom uh, presentations. So, but health fairs, it, there's not as many going on right now. There are a few outdoor health fairs going on when the weather's not too hot. And that seems to be the most effective way uh, to reach people. I was wondering too, if it would be helpful to, I mean, depending on how large your, your community is, um, you know, to go directly to uh, larger or just any, um, uh, 
assisted living or retirement facilities in your area. Have you all considered or done that? And how has that been? Well, received? we do a mass mailing every year to all the facilities and we also call them. Um, there's 1,200 of them in Miami-Dade, um, wow. so that's, that's <laughs> huge, but we only reach out to the ones that have 10 beds or more, because there's a lot that only have like four beds. They're just a house with a nurse, Yeah. Uh, but they're, they're a, registered, a registered ALF. Um, we also reached out to the VA. Um, our, a lot of nursing homes were not allowing people in during COVID and they were swamped with work because they were dealing with COVID. Um, but lately we've had a lot of success. Also, I went to the Meals for, on Wheels website and got a list of the 15 senior centers where Miami-Dade serves meals to the seniors. And the seniors get bussed in every morning and then they get served meals by Miami-Dade. So I called each one and I said, I'm a Dade County employee, I'm fully vaccinated and I'm fully background checked and I'd like to come talk to your seniors about our services because they go home to their families at night so their families could sign them up mm -hmm. and that's been very effective more so than the nursing homes because the the social workers at the nursing homes and the activities directors just seem so swamped that they don't always have time for us mm -hmm. but that's just been my experience but yes that's there was uh we have, um, there's a network uh, through the, uh, the regional libraries throughout the network are all connected and we have various um, um, committees and meets and uh, task force and groups. And one was recently a marketing and outreach and they were saying that the, if you go to the people that, um, the people that the, that serve the people, the people that work with the people, then um, like Jennifer was saying, you're getting it the most success. I know we have a few teachers on here. Um, if a teacher is getting ready for the school year and might have a student that could use these services, how much time um, do they need to, to talk to you in advance? Um, are, are most bestsellers usually available or, or um, and is there any limit to how many books they can request? Well, um, you, um, we're, you're not limited by um, actual physical cartridges on the shelves because you can, uh, so if you're, if you're saying how long do they have to wait for books, uh, generally, um, not long at all. If if we get a if somebody requests a book, calls and says, you know, I, I want the uh, the Harry I need the Harry Potter uh, series. We can usually we get them out to them on a uh, download on demand. We can uh, have it specially made and mailed out the next day, and that's uh, generally how. Uh, service service works a, a special request. Uh, we do have all of the latest titles. I believe it's. Um, um, I mean, it, it, it's the. It's just as new releasey as the, as, as the as the public library uh, is. So we have the. I'm gonna see. Uh, uh, let's see the, um, I mean, everything, the, the most recent, of course, I'm, I'm blanking on. Uh, so uh, Sarah or Jennifer, do you have any of the latest, latest uh, titles I'm looking for? We have a catalog. Rose of, run. What's that? Run, Rose, run. Dolly Parton and James Patterson. That's the one biggest in Florida, our Palm Beach County right now. <laughs> they all want it. There we go. And everybody can get it like the next day if they want to download on demand. Um, so that uh, comes through uh, quickly. Um, so can I ask you a quick question, Maureen? Uh, yes. So the download on demand, is that something that's, are those titles that are only read by your staff or volunteers? Whereas if you purchased an audio book, that would be like a regular checkout? Well, okay. I think I think I got a little 
I got excited. So I got, <laughs> so I'm, you know, talking about a lot of things at once. So there are a few different terms and formats of our collection. Now the regular, the entire collection is available right now, instantly, if you download it to your device or a staff member in the library can download it to a cartridge and have it mailed out the next day. Um, the big bulk of our collection comes through. This is like the, the um, where we're talking like hundreds of thousands of these are in our warehouse of individual books that we get like, like 10 of each title and um, patrons then can, they can select their type of service. You can get like, you can get books every month, like, you know, uh, four every month, or you can get books every other Tuesday and you can select it by subjects, by authors. Um, and then you can, you can make this as very specific or as open uh, bestsellers as you want. Uh, we get the New York Times. Yes, the um, we get the New York Times uh, bestsellers. The the NLS collection too includes the titles from many sources. Bestsellers from New York Times list, USA Today, New York Times book sections, Library Reads monthly list, book clubs like Oprah and Reese Witherspoon, publisher catalogs, patron requests, social media. Review journals, including Library Journal, Book List, and Publishers Weekly, and all of the awards Pulitzer, Penn, Agatha, Anthony, Edgar, Rita, Locus, Nebula, and Hugo, Spur, and others. So, if title, here's what you were looking for if titles are recorded and commercially available, please allow four to six weeks after publication for them to appear in the collection. And, and if so they have to, oh, yes. No, go ahead. And we've got a couple of questions in chat. I'll let you finish up what you're saying. Okay. And if NLS needs to record them, production time averages two to three months. Depending on length of book and other factors, it could be eight to nine months. Now us, because we don't have as many people and um, we work on a volunteer, ours is like nine months to a year. But four to six weeks after publication, for new titles to appear in our collection. So um, there, see if I've got this right, there are two ways that people can get audiobooks. They can download them directly into their device. So that means if they wanna download it onto their phone or other handheld device, um, that's an option. Then you also have the cartridges that you have a special machine for and yes. people can, borrow this machine? And what is the advantage of the machine? Why, why would some people choose the machine over the, the download? Well, because not everybody is um, up with, comfortable with technology or wants to download an, another app to their phone. And just would like the, uh, free, it's free. And they just would uh, like a, a free machine. I also, you did remind me of one other way you can use the BARD website and download. We have a we have a cord that will connect to the computer to the computer. Connect it like this so you can download the book to the um, cartridge using um, Bard Express. So the somebody can, they can open. So like if the, you know, the, there's a sighted person who is comfortable using the Bard website, but our website is accessible. So, you know, either, either way, you know, they can, you could, they can download their own books to the cartridge or somebody can, you know, can, uh, you know, do it uh, for them. And 
then that, that's how they get their uh, titles. And then there's a new online, there's a new, there's a new book catalog that comes out every few months. That's great. So, so the uh, cartridges are for the player. Yes. Right. And I assume the player's got nice big buttons too. That must be another yes. thing that's nice about the player. So we have a couple Oh, and it doesn't, oh wait, and it doesn't have to be a cartridge. You don't have to, um, you know what? I'm, I'm really getting ahead of myself and mixing up my uh, things. It is actually more convenient and works better if you don't have, patrons can buy cartridges to download to, or you can just use a regular flash drive. And it goes in the side of the machine. You can put a, we have a accessory, an attachment. Let's see, yeah, there we go. That you can put into the side of the machine and then put your flash drive in. So you can download books using Bard Express on your PC and put it on a flash drive and then put it in the uh, machine. So then you don't have to buy cartridges. So the couple of questions we have in chat and you may have covered some of this, but I'll go ahead and read them out. What is the cartridge used for the downloaded materials? And are we able to get the blank cartridges to download books for patrons from BARD? Well, um, that basically, yes, this is the cartridge and patrons uh, would go to, uh, they're sold on Amazon by the Perkins Library. And they're, um, I think about $9 for one and that's uh, 16 gigs. And that is massive, you could put, maybe, I don't know, I'm just saying like, um, like about a hundred books on there. And then of course it's, you know, reusable. Um, so yes, you can, so that's how a patron would get a um, blank cartridge, purchase it. And, um, but generally the easier uh, way uh, does seem to be getting a uh, flash drive. And it's, yeah, it's all just flash drive technology. That's all it is. It's, it's just like copying a Word document. It's that, it's that easy. So I, I know we have a um, staff member here who, uh, when she got married, was giving um, books away as, as kind of part of the ceremony. It was part of the the gift to, to the guests and their library made a um uh, did a download for them of the same book so that she was able to share it with her grandmother who was blind and she hadn't expected to be able to share that so that was that was wonderful to do that i know i know it's um uh, really meaningful um do you have any stories you'd like to share with us of um some projects you've been involved with um well what i what i am uh, going to start is uh, sharing of uh, what we do like to do to um, be kind of an encouragement to uh, other patrons and all the, us appreciative to, um, you know, the, the stakeholders uh, is uh, gathering feedback. Um, we had a uh, recent uh, patron that um, okay, I'm gonna gonna try to uh, pull it up here. But the book, yes, here we go. Here is something. Um, so I'm slowly building on it as time permits, um, like an article about. Uh, Patrons just maybe giving their feedback about how their what the service is meant to them. And so here is an email I ran across today. And the, this here. Ray is 101 years old and sleeps most of the night, also most of the day. So he listens to his talking book when he is awake. He very much liked the book about Jimmy Doolittle, which he completed and sent back. He knew Jimmy Doolittle as they both worked at Shell Oil. 
He is in the process of listening to Nerves of Steel, albeit slowly. Just wanted to let you know the situation, Ray's wife, Marge. And he is also a veteran of World War II. And uh, that's just amazing. It's just amazing about uh, what the what the service means uh, to to so many, and it really I mean their their um, their motto is their mission is very simple uh, that all may read. Maureen, this is Sarah. Can I jump in for a minute? Hey, yes, please. I just wanted to tell everybody about our cheers to a hundred years that we did. Uh, to for our hundred year old and uh, older patrons that we did and we had we had six that actually joined us it was on zoom we were going to do it in person obviously but covid kind of nixed that idea but we did it on uh, zoom we had two county commissioners that joined us and they were really thrilled to hear all of the because all six got a chance to talk and all six actually expressed their appreciation for this service and how much joy it brings them. And it was really, really impressive. That's awesome. So I, I wanna give a, a little bit of time for our participants here to see if you have any more questions, either about um, how to use the service, what services are available, um, what kind of resources are available, because it's, it's a lot when I started diving into it a lot more than I had realized, you talked about, you know, the music, the um, the sheet music in Braille. And um, is there anything else that maybe is available that we wouldn't know about? Um, you, said, you said novels and magazine subscriptions. Yes, I mean, we have, we have all the magazines. We have, um, um, like uh, like Rolling Stone and People and um, I mean we 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 have it all and uh, baseball schedules football schedules NFL NHL uh, all the uh, the sports schedules we have those in Braille. Uh, okay. Also have descriptive videos, uh, Maureen. Yes. Yes, um, that's at um, Brevard, FL1K, and then Sarah, you have some too. Yes, we yes. have a big collection. video, yes. And before, the, before COVID actually took everything out for being able to do big groups, we actually were taking groups of about 25 to the theaters and actually having it set up as descriptive because all theaters are required to have descriptive headphones. You have to ask for it. And they can set up the actual uh, device to be able to do the movie descriptive for anybody that needs it. They also have the, the closed captioning. Um, and we would we would take about 25 people to movies before COVID hit. And everybody loved it. They want to do it again, but we're not really, we're not comfortable yet of going back to big groups because we're still back up to 26% positivity rate here in Palm Beach County. So we're hoping to get that next year, hopefully. That's great. Oh, I think I also saw that, that there's a, a library, I don't know if it was a sub-regional or main branch that has a braille printer. Is well, a, we here at the here at the regional, it, it's a embosser. And we emboss um, the uh, the newsletter. Um, the uh, yes, the uh, the bureau newsletter and uh, sub-regionals, some of the sub-regionals have uh, uh, would like their newsletter to go out and also in Braille. Uh, we make print, large print of uh, the Bureau newsletter and um, other blind organization, like the agendas for their um, conferences. And we also make the uh, Braille for, um, well, for the, uh, for the book containers. You wouldn't think because they're, you know, um, on all of the audio, there is a Braille overlay here, and we can we make those. We make the books, and on the um, bellies of the containers, over the address is the um, uh, information. There we go. Is the 
title information right there that goes along with the title information right here. So we have two embossers here. If, if a library wanted to get um, signs in Braille or some of their information cards and sheets in Braille, is there a place they can go and a way they can do that? Well, what I can do is I could share if uh, somebody had um, questions, I'm gonna I just realize I didn't type my email in here. I can send a information sheet of um, places that can do that for you because um, we emboss things and create Braille for the library collection, not for personal copies. Or um, we do it R for the, um, uh, the we have an on-site learning center uh, with dorms where uh, people uh, come uh, rehabilitating uh, for the blind and we will print um, educational materials for them. But we just, we make materials just for the collection, but we can send a document with listing places that you can get that done. Well, we're right at time. So uh, I just want to thank you all for coming today and Maureen and Sarah and um, Karen, I think, and uh, um, Jennifer. Jennifer, uh, yeah. thank you all for joining us. We really appreciate the information you've shared. And now we know how to contact you. Uh, so I'm hoping that people here on the call will certainly reach out to you should they have questions or, you know, just need a little hand holding, you know. Um, as Amy mentioned earlier, the recording for this session will be available on our YouTube channel. And we'll be sending uh, those who registered the link to the recording, as well as a brief survey, of course, about this session. We sure hope that you'll take a few minutes to complete that. So um, please do that when you have a chance. Um, the July DLIS discussion time will be used for the quarterly Koha interest group. Um, we'll be sending out reminders uh, through our Building Success newsletter, our website, our listserv, social media, you name it, we'll inundate you. <laughs> so please join us on uh, July 18th from 3 to 4 for that. If you're interested in learning more about Koha or you're using it and want to, you know, just chat about your um, successes and uh, maybe frustrations. I don't know. I don't use Koha, so I don't know what it is. I mean, I know what it is, but anyway. Um, and then in, uh, let's see, August, we are going to have people from the Florida Humanities uh, joining us to talk about their grants program. Uh, if you have a topic you'd like us to, to discuss, um, not us, but everyone who's interested in that topic, please shoot us an email. We'd love to be able to address what your interests are and your concerns. And until then, uh, be safe, stay healthy, and please let us know how BLD can help support you and your work. Thanks so much, y'all. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.